Well, here we are again. We're going to be talking about Jesus today. I'm going to be talking about the Christ that lives in you. You see, I could talk about Jesus of Nazareth forever, and that's a wonderful message there. But that's not the Christ that lives in you. And my whole intent is that you become who God created you to be. My whole intent is that you find an identification in Christ that you've never seen or known before. That's why I come to you every morning. This is my last morning of this week. We'll take off tomorrow and Sunday. And then I'll pick up again Monday with a new message, with new life in it that will help you to be who God intended that you be. That's all in his plan. He didn't live in you. He doesn't live in you that you have a boresome life. No, sir. It's full of joy and peace and love, long suffering. So that's what we're talking about right now. In fact, our mind has been centered in uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And uh, I'm going to finish up that verse today, believe it or not. We're going to talk about the last few words that are in uh, that verse. Uh, we talked yesterday about old things are past. And then we got the word behold. Behold, well that takes me right back to the Christmas story. Behold, and throughout the Bible the word has always stipulated, maybe something the angels said, and, and anyhow, the word behold is there. Like, praise God, if you get what's in the front part of this verse, something great is going to happen to you. Something great is happening to you if you get a hold of this, this thing. That I'm talking about. So he says, Behold, all things are become new. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, that's really a stretch there. All things become new. So, first, let's see the setting of that verse. First, look at it from Christ's side. Jesus is talking here to Paul. And the Apostle Paul is going to write these things down that Jesus gives him. Come to Paul by revelation. He's going to write down these things that Jesus gives to him. And in these things that Christ gives to him is a, is a factor that is overwhelming. Jesus would say to Paul, I'm surmising this, he would say, now Paul, their past is going to be taken <clears throat> their past is going to be taken care of but i want you to tell them this all things will become new all things are become new now i like the verbiage in these verses it's not something that's going to happen it's something that is your Christian life is something that is. It's not something that's going to happen. It's something that is. You see, study to show the things that have happened to you, Paul would say. Separate soul and spirit. Separate soul and spirit. That's what I guess I'm trying to get across to you right now. Is that verse of scripture where the word of God is sharp and powerful more so than any two-edged sword dividing asunder soul and spirit. The only way most people are going to move on into the Lord is to get in the scriptures and see the difference between their soul and spirit. Soul is not saved. It's being saved. Spirit is saved and is perfect because that's Christ. That's Christ in you. I don't know why somebody else doesn't say this all the time. I listen to preachers. I don't know why they don't say that every time they get in the pulpit. Every time they open their mouth, they ought to say something about Christ living in human beings. They don't do it. 
because I don't think they either know about it or don't want to do it or that takes away their power or something. I don't understand modern religion. I don't understand it at all. I got a book in my library. And, and this book is uh, written back in the 1800s. It's a book of sermons from this preacher. And in almost every sermon, he says something about believers in Christ. In Christ. Well, I kind of get the the word that what's happened to us today, most preachers would like for you just to be in the church. That's okay. But that church building is not the body of Christ. And to be in Christ, you constitute the body of Christ. You are part of it. And that's the strength that we draw from to where all things become new. All things become new. The old car that breaks down becomes new because you handle it differently now as one in whom Christ lives. It may be a problem between husband and wife, but you handle it differently now because all things become new. Meaning that you have a new source of life. You have a new source of knowledge. You have a new source of understanding. All things become new. Christianity is a way of handling this earthly life. Our enemies here on earth are the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's really where our enemies are. Well, some of you got enemies that live next door to you, and some of you got enemies on the job. But the Bible breaks it down into three different areas. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Those are your enemies. And so let me tell you, there are, they are the things that are passing away. They are the things that won't bother you anymore once. You're able to be a believer in Christ. You understand that? That's what i got to get across to you. I don't want it to be preacher talk. I don't want it to be just me talking to you out of the top of my mind. I want to talk from these scriptures. I want to talk from the Word. The only message in this book that belongs to people in this dispensation of grace is Paul's message. i got to get it across to you. His message is for the dispensation of grace. He started the dispensation of grace. He had his hand on the truth that belong to this dispensation. So I want you to get a grip on this idea that all things become new. They're new. you got a new, vibrant life ahead for you. It isn't the old car. It isn't the old man or old woman you're living with. It isn't the kids. It isn't the job. It isn't life all around you. You change life all around you because all things become new in Christ Jesus. In Christ. In Christ. All things become new. I hope that I can get that across to you, that that's a real idea to you. So we got our whole verse before us now. It says, therefore, if any man, any woman, any person be in Christ. If any one of you know that you're in Christ. I don't mean in the church. That's not the same thing. I don't mean in the program. That's not the same thing. I mean in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you are in Him. You are in His body. Now, I'm sure when Paul came up with the word church and the body of Christ, which is, he is the more or less inventor of those programs, he never dreamed that there'd be a church on every corner that preached and taught something different. I don't think it was ever in the mind of Paul who wrote these scriptures from Christ 
that the religious world will turn like it is today. But I want to tell you something. That's not the end of that statement. The Lord who gave this message to Paul knew what was going to happen in 2011, 2012, 2020, or whenever up to the time Christ reappeared on this earth. He knew, he knew that. The Lord knew all about that. And so there's not anything in this book that needs to be brought up to date. We don't need to bring up the date going to the moon. That, that won't give you an ounce of spiritual depth and growth. We don't need to know all about computers. Nobody does uh, where I am anyhow know all about them. We don't need to know all about living in this modern world. It's constantly changing. What we need to know is that Christ lives in me and as a Christ person, I handle the world, the flesh, and the devil. I can handle it all. I'm not overwhelmed by them. Christ lives in me. I have eternal life dwelling in me. My spirit part is perfect because Christ is the real me to the Heavenly Father. But we need to get into that verse that says, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth and with the strong sword of the Scriptures, separate soul and spirit. Get them separated. Because one is eternally saved and the soul is in the process. That's how you come to know who you are. That's why it's so important that you know who you are in Christ Jesus. You know that. You can put your finger on the scriptures that tell you who you are in Christ. Now you're not perfect at it. That soul. You're not good at living the Christian life in totality, but that soul. You may not have a mind that remembers all of this, but that soul. And you may go against what is apparent will of God and apparent will of the Scriptures, but that soul. Separate the two and start with the fact of Christ in you and you in Christ. And live it. Now I want you to have a happy, wonderful weekend. I want God to move and work in your life in a very special way. And that the scriptures will open up to you as never before. And I'll be back Monday morning with another time in Christ. Bless you now.